Welcome in, everybody. It's time to do it again. It's three guys before the game. Thank you so very much for being with us. Hope you had yourself a wonderful Christmas holiday. That's Christmas Eve and the Christmas Day put together. We're back to work. I mean, my boy Kerchival, he worked Christmas night, at least out of the house. He went remote. But I saw that you posted a story on the website, and it was uh, Christmas night. I said, my boy, my boy. My boy, well, my boy. A, I mean, it was it was a sad story because I gotten word that um, longtime judicial figure Larry Starcher had died, died on Christmas Eve, and he had been a longtime circuit judge in Montgomery County. Tony, you covered him when you were doing sure. some news, and then he was served a 12-year term on the state Supreme Court. He was a professor at the WV Law School, so it was a um, significant passing of a uh, it was a passing of a significant judicial figure. Yeah, in West absolutely. Virginia. I mean, but the point is, you just you just pick up the torch. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is. It's just like that's what you do. Well, that's news. You're like a fire like senator. He's like a fireman. Like the bell the bell rings, he goes up down the pole. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is. He's going down the pole. Correct. I mean, that's why he is. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. Three guys before the game is brought to us by Comax Business Systems, your full service Konica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems at ComaxWV.com. Got a story about them. What about what? Did you hook it up yet? No. Still haven't. Haven't had time. Kids, Christmas. Yeah, I know. Free time. Three guys before the game also brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at BurdettCamping.com. And by GoMart. If you are not a GoMart Rewards card member, you need to sign up today. Save on gas, your favorite snacks. Go to GoMart.com, rewards, and many more. Just go to the, as soon as you go to GoMart.com, you see this big old thing on the right-hand side that says rewards. Sign up for the rewards card, then you just start saving, saving on your gas and a bunch of other stuff. So check it out at GoMart. Someone came up to me at a uh, function uh, in the last couple of days, and uh, they had heard that we had that Gomart was on as a sponsor. And uh, they said, you know, Gomart once uh, once saved my life. I said, excuse me? Excuse me? They said, yeah. So I'm playing gas tank roulette. Uh-huh. <laughs> playing, playing gas tank roulette. Never was. Got this big, big time vacation. Got to get to the airport where they're going. And this person's playing gas tank roulette, which means... I think I can make it. I think I kind of like the little oh. train. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. And the and the this probably years ago, the thing started doing the the heat. Oh, uh huh. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. And it and it looked up and it was like, it was like an oasis. He saw the GoMart sign, and went oh, you know, kind of like that. Rolled her in, uh-huh. rolled it into GoMart. Gas in out. Pit stop, gone, makes the airport, goes on the overseas trip. Yeah. So uh, Gomar can do that for you. And in addition, of course, you can buy the fly rod at Slim Jim. <laughs> Would be easier, though, if you just rolled into Gomar with like even a quarter tank or a little bit quarter eighth of a tank. tank. Maybe not on fumes there. Yeah. It's a better story, though. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good so, story when it works. Yeah. So check that out. That if you run out of gas and you can see the Gomar. <laughs> yeah, right there. It's- Everyone got their Christmas presents. Thanks to Burdett Camping Center, Santa used Burdett uh, recreational vehicles as portable storage units with all of those toys for the little kitties, and uh, he just carried them around. I didn't realize, auxiliary reindeer. They uh, hook onto the front of those Burdett campers. They take off. Yeah, sleigh's a sleigh. You got to have size. And at, uh, at Burdett Camping, whatever size you need, I mean, you want a little, you want a little thing? You want a little pup tent? You want, you want a big? You want, right? They can get whatever you need. And so Burdett Camping, you can visit them at BurdettCamping.com, BurdettCamping.com. Tell them Santa sent you. Big week, boys. It's showtime. Big week. Showtime. Yeah. It is showtime for the Mountaineer basketball team as they embark on the Big 12 conference portion of the season. I didn't realize it because things have gone well here for the world champion Mountaineers at 10-2. and two. There is some trepidation among the Mountaineer fan base. Kind of like, we've been here before and we got disappointed. Right? 
Oh, yeah. Just last, last year. Last year. <laughs> like last year, everyone's going like, at this point, everyone's clapping their hands together and going, Hercules, 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 Hercules. Here we go. Big 12, Hercules. And then things didn't go real well at all. And so the question becomes, is this team going to do well in the Big 12 or is it a paper mache? Well, I think it's important to get off to, uh, let me do what I do and I just state the obvious. I mean, get off to a good start here because, you know, Brad, this is a brutal schedule. We've talked about that. This conference is very difficult. And you start with two road games, which we're qualifying as winnable. Then you come back and you got Kansas and Baylor back to back. So can you, as we've talked about before, can you get two? Can you maybe get three if you only get one and you're behind the eight ball? So, I mean, this it's a long season, but this has a the potential to sort of set the tone for where you are for January and February. Yes. Right? December 31st. The, I, I'm anxious for this for those reasons right there. Because this, listen, even if you win against Kansas there's a lot of basketball left to get some really good teams. Sure. But this starts to tell the story a little bit here. And Kansas State, listen, Kansas State's one of those teams we said before the year, what'd you yeah. call them, an expansion, expansion team? Because they, they literally remade everybody on that roster. It's a brand new roster, new coach coming in. They've had a surprisingly good start to their their season. 11-1 and one are the K-State Wildcats. Stunning. So Stunning. Here, you've heard me talk about this before. How much does strength of schedule matter? We'll see if these computer rankings hold any water, and this is the first game where West Virginia will be by far the stiffest test, at least in the computer rankings, KenPalm.com, the computer rankings for what Kansas State has faced so far. A quick look down the Wildcats' schedule so far, Hoppy, 78, 76, Butler and LSU are the two best that Kansas State has taken on. Nebraska at 89, we know Fred Hoiberg struggled there with the Cornhuskers. West Virginia checking at 21 yeah, in the Ken Palm yeah. rankings. The computers love West Virginia right now. Will that show itself in Manhattan where the Mountaineers are projected to win by one, guys, 71 <laughs> to 70? By the way, that's not a that's not a projection. <laughs> like by one. That's, that's, I guess we have to put a score down here. Yeah. We're going to flip a coin. Well, it's the – I mean, that's the whole season so far for Ken Palm. Ken Palm's got West Virginia like one-point game, one-point game, one-point game, two. One point game, one point game, two. Let's, let's look at that. We talked about that on Friday when we were here. We went down the first five. Let's look if that's adjusted at all. Uh, it's changed slightly. Kansas State, win by one. Oklahoma State, lose by two. Kansas, lose by one. Baylor, win by three. Oklahoma, lose by two. TCU, win by six. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's tight. Oh, then I didn't go far enough. Oh. Kansas, lost by one. Texas Tech lost by two. <laughs> well, it's tight, but you got you 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 gotta be you gotta set your goal for a little bit above five hundred, right? I mean, that's what you're trying to do. Oh, I mean, dude, you know, I mean, you're you trying could, to win them all, but you're yes, trying to yeah, get ten, like ten. Ten would be ten would be great. Ten would be great. You take nine. Nine, you're in. Depends yeah. on how the eight looks. Eight and ten might get you in. I know, but you don't nine. want to. It's like that's like that guy going to Go Mart playing the gasoline it, roulette. It's, it is. <laughs> it is tournament roulette at that <laughs> point. It is. You don't want to play tournament roulette. Agreed. You want to have a half a tank at least going in there. So you're right. I mean, do you hope that West Virginia goes eighteen and zero? Sure, you do. However, realistically, no one's going to go eighteen and zero in this league. Not this year. It, it almost never happens to begin with. So and then you start going, okay, where can they be? And the, the biggest and the most intriguing thing to me is, based on these numbers, okay, so who is the bad? Who are the, who are the lower-level teams? If you want to do this kind of like in soccer, you know, they say they call it the table. They call the standings the tables, like the, the upper half of the table and the bottom half of the table. Like, who are the bottom half of the table? Well, but, but Tony, we looked at the power rankings, and, and those will start to sort themselves out as we get into league play. But, I mean, right now there isn't really a lower level. Okay, I mean, normally you look at a league and, and you say, okay, these are the bottom teams and you can probably get a win here. And, but right now you don't have a defined lower level in this league. Correct. Doesn't exist. Correct. But there's, there's going to be. There has there, to be. But, but even the lower level might be pretty good. That's yeah. the thing. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But at the end of the day, someone, yeah, like, I mean, in football, you could have made the case that there weren't any really bad teams this year in the Big 12. There were some that were better than others, but there wasn't any horrifically bad teams. No. AKA, like, you know, when Kansas, when Kansas was just was totally bad. disoriented and you could just, that was a pencil mark. I don't think that's there. Well, like in football, unfortunately, it 
two-thirds of the way through the season when West Virginia, you look around and say, who are the bad teams? And you can't pick out one and go, oh, it's us. Yeah. <laughs> That's, well, they so, always say that. You look around and can't identify the mark. You're the mark. Yeah, you're the mark. Uh, but, okay, let's just take our Ken Palm rankings here for a second. Here, here's your teams as we stand today that are at the bottom of this list. And by the way, everybody in the Big 12 is in the top 52 in the country. Yes. Amazing. So start there. So bottom of the list, 52, is Kansas State. Next up, 46, Iowa State, who, by the way, went to a Sweet 16 last year. Then, I'm working from bottom to top, then TCU, who many thought might win the league this year, right? They, they were, one loss they were right the now. hot team, TCU, TCU, TCU. Then Texas Tech, then Oklahoma, then Oklahoma State. If you go, West Virginia sitting at fourth right now in the league in terms of Ken Palm ranking, five, six, seven, eight. So if you take the five through eight teams, excuse me while I put my... Did you lose a? Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, Did you lose a? Side. You lose. Arm. You lost a stem. Lost an arm. What happened there? Broke off. Thirty through thirty-eight for five through eight in this league. I mean, I know you really well. That stuns me that you're using the glasses without a stem. No time. Haven't had time to replace. He's using that for a long time. But knowing you, I Busy thought you would just leave the glass. I'm not putting it on. I mean, that is classic. That is so on you to go that route. Well, sometimes you just got to do stuff. But that's I'm not busy. you. I had to see. How'd the stem come off? I don't know. It just broke. What do you mean it just broke? Well, I don't know. How would I know that? Did you pick him up and the stem was off? Or just, did you hear a snap? No, I don't know. I don't know that. Screw fell out. It just broke. What's it matter how it broke? Well, I just know if there was an... If, if it was it's a results-based business. Either it is or it isn't. So it isn't there. So well, we, my, just, we, just, make, we that, just make do. That's fair. But not, most of the time when something is just like an in, a, a, a tangible object, it normally just doesn't fall apart just while it's sitting there. Something has to happen. There needs to be an acute trauma that would make that stem come off. Agree or disagree, Hoppy? I disagree. The, because the screw yeah. can come out. Thank you. The little screw comes out, and you, you know, the thing is you can't even see it. And so it comes out, and you go, what the? I got to go somewhere, and you put the glass on. Well, at I least mean, you could have ID when Brad that happened. On this. I'm you. with Brad on this. Thank you. He can see what he's, it's not like, he's not going like this, like, I can't see. <laughs> he's, he's performing the function right, you right. ask him to do. Right. Handle. <laughs> Just handled it. I mean, I don't wear them all the time. This is a bigger issue if I walk around all the time with one missing. Then I think you bring, no, bring attention it to it. It would have been better when if you I'm would. using it in a in, – I mean, we've been on the air how long I've used them for 30 seconds. So it's really – to me, it's not the big deal. Do they function? Yeah, they function. You know what would have been they better? They did what they were supposed to do. Yeah, now you're, we move you're on. fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Worry I about saw that five tough. through eight was in the top 30 of the, yeah, you of got the it. Ken Palm rankings. And that would have been better if you would have went electrical tape and put the thing back on there. So I don't you're... need to. It's just like a magnifying glass, almost like a telescope. <laughs> I could just put a telescope here and lean into the telescope. He could use the there. he could use the tape they use on the um, yard marker. On the <laughs> hey, um, well, no, I, the... I would, but there's it's all used up on the yard marker. Yeah. the 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 downside of the Big Twelve is we don't know if there's a there are bottom teams, so every night's a challenge. The upside is you got to strengthen the schedule. Right? So mm -hmm. if it's coming down to the wire and you think, okay, you're on the bubble, whatever, and you right. go, okay, uh, you got Baylor, you got Texas Tech, you got, I mean, you, you, you got Kansas. So you have a chance also to improve your standing down yes. the stretch, correct? Yes. And you only have really most of these teams, there, there's a couple of games this week before league play starts, but for the most part, the SEC game at the end of January will be your league's last chance to gain any other non in conference credibility. And you got them at home. You got Auburn at home. You got Auburn at home. But and the rest that's, of the why, that's why eight and ten in the league puts you right. – you have a shot at that. Yeah. Most leagues won't have that opportunity. No. So West Virginia stays on the road, and then they'll play Oklahoma State on Monday, January the 2nd. Uh, it's unfortunate. All ten teams play on Saturday, and West Virginia plays the last game. And that's unfortunate because we got those football playoffs. For those yeah well, that's a busy mm -hmm. sports day it is so anyway here, here really quick this is what the first day in league play is texas tech at tcu nine and two against ten and one oklahoma state at kansas on cbs Ooh. eight and four cowboys so they're going to lose and so they're really going to have to they'll play really super hard on monday after they lose their first game texas at oklahoma on saturday at 2 p.m and by the way, just when you always think that West Virginia gets the short end of the straw when it comes to ESPN Plus games, Texas Oklahoma is on ESPN Plus, really forcing people to. You know. yeah. Baylor is at Iowa State, nine and two against nine and two. That'll be a very early indicator as to what's up with Baylor. 
because if they can go into Hilton and win, and just as you were saying, Brad, like the computer's not loving Iowa State right now, that'll be an interesting result. And then West Virginia, currently ranked 24th in the nation. The nationally rated Mountaineers now ranked at 24, taking on the Kansas States, and that is a 7 o'clock game, and it is on ESPN+. Plus. But 6 o'clock for those of us that will be watching it in the central time zone. <laughs> 7 o'clock back here. Points off turnovers big in this game. Both teams in the top 89 percentile of points off turnover. So no surprise. We'll, we'll say that for every Mountaineer game this year. But Kansas State's been very good in that area. Their defense right now, at least metric-wise, is ahead of West Virginia's. But West Virginia has the edge on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. And there's a player, folks, that you may, if you follow this pretty closely, uh, that is on the Kansas State team. Uh, Keontae Johnson. He was the young man that collapsed on the floor in-game when he was playing for the University of Florida. And it was extremely frightening. And this was a couple of years ago. And he has a condition, a, med a medical, physical condition, and it looked as though his career was going to be over. Now, this was the preseason player of the year in the SEC when he was down. But he is rolling it. He's averaging 18 points, seven rebounds, two assists, and he's shooting 50% from the field. So he is really, really good. And so that's going to be your guy that you're going to have to think about on Saturday night, Keontae Johnson. He was a, an SEC preseason player of the year favorite mm -hmm. before he ended mm -hmm. up having to step away. He's very good. Here's a stat we haven't said much over the years, but West Virginia continues its hot three-point shooting, city, sitting in the 90th percentile this season in three-point field goal percentage and shooting it really well. Can you keep going? Mm -hmm. In the 99th percentile over the last five games, up over 41% from three in the last five games. You get any advantage because the games at K-State at night on New Year's Eve and the students are in session and the football team plays earlier that day? Hopefully. Do you think? Do Maybe. You th do you sure. think there's anything there? Take any edge you can get. Do, you, do, they, do they pack the thing out? First-year coach, they're playing well. I'm just wondering how that dynamic will be. On do New Year's Eve? Up? Yeah. I no? So. Shaking no. it off? No. You know, they have the little apple drop there. Yeah, in yeah. Or maybe people that go to that and then go to the apple drop. I don't know. But students being out, that's big. Yeah, that does help. That does help. Senator picked up a, a football transfer from LSU. Tight end. Big guy. Big. Pass catching tight end. Hmm. Big exactly, fella. And exactly what Neil had said that they wanted. Said that they wanted a guy that could catch the ball downfield as a tight end. I think that's a I think that's a good get because I mean the guy's played LSU for three years. He has catches at LSU. He's played a lot of football. And, you know, he's power five and a big time power five. He's not coming from a school to get well, he was had success there, but it was mm -hmm. a, you know, it wasn't a power five. So I mean on paper, that looks like a good get. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was clearly a need. So Senator, how quickly in your opinion before the vacancies on the staff are filled? I would think you're going to get offensive coordinator really quickly here. Now, what's that mean? Well, I thought I would think you're going to get it really quickly. Quicker than you fix your glasses or later? Yeah, because it's been just going on a year plus with the glasses. I don't, <laughs> I don't think Neil has a year plus to wait on that. So You think a week, two weeks? What I, do you think? Why wouldn't it be this week? Okay. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know that. That's just me talking, but I, I know they are right there. Yeah, I mean, if you've been holding back of making moves until you get your recruiting class signed, well, that was done last week. So, yeah, probably right. And Look, potential incoming assistance in maybe playing in bowl games right. or something. Right. That's what I would think. So you would, have to, you would have to get through that stage. So just I mean, maybe you've already locked it down. You haven't announced it. Or maybe it's whoever you want. They're saying, let me get, let me get through this bowl game or whatever. I mean, there are Hear, some other circumstances. Hearing any names, Senator? Oh, I think there's some names being kicked around out there. I heard a name last week, but now I hear probably not. <laughs> That's the way it goes. I thought it was like it was like it was on a quick. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And it might not happen. Hmm. All right. So, we'll see. I mean, it's not. It, it's it's a. Obviously, it's a critically important position. Number one. Number two. It might be difficult. Uh, well, it would be difficult to find somebody, right? Right, Brad. Because you go. Wait a minute. Because look, I want to hire you, Brad. You're a hot shot. You're, uh, you know, you're a guy, probably want to be a head coach at some point, and uh, let's get you in here, you know, and you're going to call the plays. 
and you say, "Hey, coach, that's great, man. I love you, but uh, are you how? What's what's your future there? Um, no what's, doubt. What's yeah, there's on? no doubt. I th- I think new the, AD. I yeah, mean, what? new AD. The uncertainty around Neil and the staff. So, there's no question that makes it more difficult. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see. Stay tuned. You guys ready? Yep. Anything else? By the way, real quick, what was your best Christmas present? Uh, I know you don't exchange. I, don't I, did someone give you like anything? Like a, your newspaper guy give you like a piece of toffee or I got, something? I got three things because we don't exchange gifts. So my son gave me slippers, old guy stuff, um, from um, our supervisor here. got a nice bottle of wine. And from Greer, I got a knife, like a carving knife. Yeah. I mean, like a I know what major you got. league carving knife. I know what you got. Three nice gifts. Yeah. Yeah. I got two of the same things. You didn't get slippers? So our boy, I wore, I, I've never worn slippers in my life, but I got these Ugg slippers. Holy cow. Nice. Do you have those? You got them? I don't know. I have some, but I don't wear them in the house. I wear them out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got those other ones. These ones, these ones are made for house. These yeah. ones are made for house. Dude, they're unbelievable. They're unbelievable. Had those things on all weekend. I've cooking. gone, you know, I've gone pro slipper. I was no, non slipper for a while. It's a, really it's a last slipper. transition to elderly status. <laughs> it really, truly is. Like I, I looked at my, I looked down at my feet. I said, I got freaking slippers on. I'm like officially, I'm freaking old. Who wears slippers? Keep your feet warm. I understand that. Pro slipper. Yeah. Well, what, I mean, okay. What are you gonna do around the house? You don't want to wear your shoes, right? You know, dry, socks tracks are, up around the house. Socks made me. My, my feet were too fall cold. Risk. Fall risk. Fall, fall risk. risk. Especially so for the elder. The elder I mean, these like slippers. I mean, and you know what else I got? This is all about heat. Uh, probably my best Christmas present. I got heated gloves. Oh, really? You Excuse charge me? them. Excuse me? What? Excuse me? Charge them. What? You, you charge them. They got the, it's a, it's a, like a little USB thing. You hook them into these gloves. They got these little battery, lithium battery packs. You put these bad boys on. Freaking nice. How long does the oh. heat last in them? Uh, I walked this morning like 45 minutes. I was still blowing hot, man. Really? Yeah. Can you control the heaters or just one? Oh, you got four settings. Oh, I'd like to get it. 25, 50, 75%, 100% power. Plug in everything these days, don't you? You do. Plug my slippers in. My left hand stayed hotter than my right hand. <laughs> See, I got this. <laughs> I got this. I got this uh, Raynaud syndrome. What? Excuse what me? does that mean? There's this thing where, like, you don't get right blood flow. And it just, it's occasional. My neighbor, my neighbor, who's an orthopedic surgeon, he made the diagnosis kind of out of his purview. But anyway, <laughs> he said, nah, that's probably what it is. So it's an unofficial cross the driveway diagnosis. I said, yo, what's this? I, my fingers get all, he goes, yeah, he goes, probably got a little bit of that Darius Raynaud syndrome. But he didn't say Darius, but that's how I remember what it's called because of Darius Raynaud, same sure. spelling. So anyway, so now I got these gloves. I just turn them on, nice. battery up, off I go. Brad, what did you get? Uh, more about the kids at our house. Okay. Heavy, heavy it's not what he asked Christmas. you. It's not. It's, he didn't say who's the Christmas more about. Like, did yeah, you get some good? Here's the thing. I'm I'm well aware of what he asked yeah. me, and I'm also in charge of my own answer. So See? I'm going to answer how I want it to answer. I, I don't mean, care what he asked me. Just trying to share here, Hoppy. This is why I, I don't think, know why you try and do every show. You try and get me on that. I don't care what he asks or you ask. See, I'll answer with what I want to answer. This kind of like hugs does. You don't scream at Hugs when he doesn't answer. Hugs hadn't answered a question in 25 years. You don't yell at him. I'm just taking after Hugs. I'm not going to answer your question. So how's Hugs do it? Hey, Samuel hey, Brown, he'll answer the question. Yeah. So hey, let's. So give me a Hugs answer here, Brad. Hey, Coach, it seemed as though you guys really struggled to rebound the ball. Well, I think I think Jimmy's been really, really good offensively. We just got to be able to throw the ball and score it close. <laughs> How, how, about, how about, or maybe. Take your question, so I'm not answering it. You think Hugs does that? Oh, he does it all the time. He's one of the all-time greats. You think he knows he's doing it? I, sure he does. I don't know. He's been doing it so long, he might not. I mean, just he doesn't care. He's got stuff to say. So, he's so just ask, me say, a, ask me a Hugs question. He's just, what, what is he going to say? Ask me a Hugs all question. Right, ask, how about, same rebounding question. Coach had a little trouble rebounding today. What happened? You gotta understand. Hold on one second. It usually it, it's usually more consistent when you try and compliment what the team has done. Oh, that's oh. usually when he's so yeah, yeah, the yeah, other yeah, way. Give me one. Give me one. Coach, you were really good. Thought the energy was great. Thought you got on the glass really well in the first half tonight. Agree? You know, guys got to get down and guard. I mean, if you don't guard, you got no chance. Yeah, you're right. He does. Does never answers what you ask. Right. That's, well, but but if good. he but he might say also he might say. Well, I don't know. We practice it. Practice rebounding. I don't tell him what to rebound. I don't well, they re- so tell I think, him what to do. Well, I'll tell you what. Now, Senator, say his name was Senator. His name was Spreads now. 
He's baby hugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's baby hugs. Yeah, that's I knew it was something. I knew it was something. Boy, I tell you what. I ah, forget it. Anyway, let's do this thing. You ready to do this thing? <laughs> Put out this tight end with a six seven. Get a bad matchup. What do you think? Hey, uh, wasn't it nice having the uh, producer of this song in the studio on the last it episode? Was. David, he was well, terrific. I give him a lot of credit for getting up early and braving the conditions to come in. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, what a background he has. Like we know the relationship with Phil Faini and the whole thing. Plus, he did you? Were you in here when he said he was like super good friends with B. E. Taylor's son, Hoppy? I didn't get that. Yeah, really? I think you were. Yeah, yeah he I was off you, doing show prep. I think you were. You left. Yeah, he was. He's like beat. No his kidding. Son. Uh. Now remember, Taylor. He only had five catches last year. So say pass catching tight end. He's going to have to work his way in there, and show it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no question. No question. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting already nice big getting. target. Six seven. Split him out. Get a bad matchup. Catch the ball over the middle. Position of need. So. Yes. Take it. So you feel that. So check the box, right? Move on. Good start. Um, one thing that really hit me over the uh, last couple of days was how close we are to the Hoppy Kirchevel Fest, which is oh, coming yeah. up a week from this weekend, right? We call that two weeks. Yeah. That, well, it's 12 <laughs> it's like two days weeks away. From now? 12, two weeks. Nine days away. Yeah, that is. It's yeah. not a week and a half away. And so over the weekend. Well, before Santa jumped into the sleigh. <laughs> hey, Taylor, can you show Santa um, before he jumped? There's Santa. Oh, my gosh. Before he got into the sleigh. And uh, there's Santa. What? Is that some of the Kirch of Ale? That literally is. That's a Chestnut Brew that? Works, and he's pulling a little something something. I had a couple more stops to make. I told you, Blisson, and I <laughs> told you, Donner, get back in line. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rudolph is saying, I mean, we got a problem. So it's there, man. ready to go. Yeah, it's 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 doing what it does. So it's, I mean, it's now it's it's it's, it's drinkable. drinkable. He's having one. It's so. been drinkable. Like he said, it could have been drunk, drank. Like it could have been drank like a week after we were there when you were pulling the uh, grain out of the thing. It was drinkable then, but now it's just getting now it's just getting just right. Mm-hmm. So we'll be headed to the Growler soon for pickup on Jan six. Mm-hmm. Jan six. Mm-hmm. Texter. <laughs> <laughs> Over the past few episodes, you referenced Japanese Kit Kats multiple times. It brought back a lot of good memories. I was stationed in Japan for two years, enjoyed Japanese food and culture. In my experience, the Japanese people are very hospitable, have the best customer service out of anywhere I've been in the world. In the world? My favorite Kit Kat flavor was green tea. Ooh. I learned that the Japanese McDonald's is far greater than the U.S. version, but my greatest discovery was by far Georgia coffee. Get to take a look at that. This perfect blend. Now, that's the vending machine. Yep, thank you. This perfect blend of coffee and sugar is sold out of vending machines in a small can. It's available hot or cold. It is a true delight to the taste buds. You can get them in bulk in the States, but they are very pricey. So Georgia coffee, coffee and sugar together. Jeff in Edwards, California, P.S. My family has land in Fayette <laughs> County. <laughs> of course they do. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, show the vending machine there, too. So they're, like Japanese are way That's ahead Japanese of us. the Japanese vending machine? Yeah, they're way ahead. See, you can see it there. They're way ahead of us in vending machine stuff. Like, we got like a Snickers bar. They got like a very eclectic series of things. You can buy it hot. You can buy it cold. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Zach in South Bend via Hurricane. Binoculars, bets, and beer. The saga grows. I was talking to a customer at work in Indiana about trying to beat the storm home last night. Turns out he has land in Elkview, <laughs> and his dad is from Cabin Creek. You uh-huh. can't make this stuff no, up. No, you cannot, Zach. You cannot make it up. JMO writes in, Tony, money, I believe, is a big factor to good players leaving. You think? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Texter, hey, three guys, glad to see two records broken in the last episode. Hoppy took it immediately off track as usual, and my coworkers saw me full belly laughing just three minutes in. 
Got a lot of strange looks, but was laughing too hard to explain. Keep up the good work, Jim and Preston County. Hoppy, you have been tagged as the guy that takes this thing off the track. It wasn't my fault you didn't shower. <laughs> so just, I, I forgot thought, why we got off track. I thought I was yeah. just speaking to the obvious yeah. what I was doing. Like, we can ignore the elephant in the room. Brad's got a nice shirt on, groomed. I got a nice shirt on. Tony looks like he just woke up. I thought we would deal with it right up front so we wouldn't have to. People going, what's, what's up with Tony? <laughs> Solid. I thought I was stating the obvious. You said. <laughs> Uh, Texter, gentlemen. Hello. I'm sitting here watching Home Alone, and the, with the family, and I couldn't help but think that Marv has a striking resemblance to what I pictured the senator might have looked like in 1990. And now that I've thought that it, about it, I can't unsee it. I don't suppose that it, acting was also one of the senator's many side hustles over the years. Merry Christmas, fellas. Hope you all had a great one. Curtis in Portland. You ever done any acting? Which one's Marv? He's oh, sidekick. Go, one of the burglars. Joe Pesci's sidekick. Sidekick. Have I done any acting? Yeah. Uh, oh, we might have something. There. Eighth grade, seventh grade, school play? No, never a school play. You mean community theater? No. Shakespeare during the summer? No. Anything at all? I'm trying to think if I was in a commercial before or not. Can't remember. Excuse me? Probably in something. In Des Moines? Like when you were young? Like you and Jamie Dixon, because Jamie's a child no, actor. No, I, I don't. Uh, you know that, don't you, Hop? No. TCU coach Jamie act, Jamie Dixon, child actor. Really? Yeah. His dad was in the agency business. He appeared in many commercials. He was in a, a Life Serial commercial and a Volvo commercial. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you know, he turned child out okay, actor. which is good. Most of those kids end up junkies. So I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, it says it right in their bio and their game notes. Yeah. And TCU's game notes says child oh, actor still maintains a SAG card. Yeah. I wonder if he still gets some. Um, Royalties? Royalties. I don't know. Uh, Texer says, I just saw the Mothman on YouTube. It's Ric Flair. <laughs> I forgot to research that. I gotta, I'm, still, I'm still efforting that. I forgot. <clears throat> Did I give you the guy's name yet? I don't want his name. I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the real story. You can do that, or I can just give you his name. All right, give me his, text me his name. Well, I, after the show, I might even be able to tell it to you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> text it. I'm six feet away from him. I'll forget. Senator, I'm six feet away from him. He says, text that to me. You know why? I'm right on the cutting edge of technology. <laughs> this one's got some depth to it. Sud scopes and up-tempo. That's what he's calling you because you talk fast, Brad. Pre-conference play, which is most likely. Scenario one, does West Virginia's basketball team end up with five players averaging over 9.6 points or more for the season, or we improve on the current four seed that we hold from Joe Lenardi? In other words, right now, West Virginia, he says, details, Eric, Trey, Emmett, Joe, and Keedy currently averaging 9.6 points or better, but everyone in our conference is 50 or better in Ken Palm, scoring should get tougher. Agree. In the brackets, we've gone from out of the tournament to a four through non-conference play. So which of those happens? We improve on a four, or those guys all continue to score it at above nine and yeah, a half? Yeah, it's an important distinction because I play this a lot on sports line with them, which is more likely. Okay. Neither of these probably happen. Okay. But which is more likely? That's the key distinction here. And that's a good one because both are – Listen, if this team were to go from what it put on the floor last year to a to even a top four seed, this that is a massive improvement. We did that. When did we do that in the off season? Yeah, it's almost it was like a five win conference season jump would be historical. Mm, yes, correct. Right. Correct. So getting all the way up to a four seed almost just can't happen. But I also agree with the the defense getting better. Those points per game are going to come down. In fact, they already have. Five guys were averaging 10 points a game as of just a few weeks ago. So that's already starting to backslide. If I'm picking more likely, I would say that one, although I don't think either of these can stick. Okay, here we go. Which is more likely? We end up in the top half of Ken Palm's adjusted defense in the conference or the top three in adjusted offense in the conference by the end of the season. Which is more likely? Offense, okay. I think, because I think this offense is it, it's better than the defense right now. He says we currently rank fourth in adjusted offense and eighth 
in adjusted defense. Mm -hmm. Bonus. The most disconcerting issue going into conference play is Emmett's bone bruise. He won't lead us in any statistical category, but I'm convinced he is the MVP of this team. He does it all, and the flow of offense takes a hit, and the rotations on defense suffer when he's not in. Santa, I'm asking for a healthy Emmett to start the season. I think you make a lot of good points. I agree with how critical he is. I think Trey Mitchell's scoring is right up there on the most important factors moving forward. Can he stay in that 13 to 17 range scoring? But Emmett's right up that list. Agree. Tim in St. Albans writes, Three amigos, as I walked this evening in balmy 13-degree weather, I made a mental note to ask TC to remind everyone that we are past now the shortest day of the year and spring is right around the corner. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. That's right. We have now passed the winter equinox and so each day now will start to get longer more daylight i'm glad that you said that because that was unknowable previously well before Hoppy, you said that that was unknowable if you're a regular to sports line you would know that as a public service i try to tell people to get out and enjoy as much daylight as possible and by june the 21st they don't take full advantage and then from june yeah. 21st to june 22nd that thing starts going before you know it Pitch black at six at night on August the thirteenth. <laughs> uh, texter, hello, Bob from Charlestown. I love the pod; always makes me laugh. Happy New Year! Summing up the show themes from twenty twenty two. TC goes boring. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy goes brewing. Always go with Bradwin Bettman. That being said, it is best to tailgate with an RV from Burdette Camping. Let's go, Mountaineers! Good summary. Well done, Bob. Yeah. That, I should have read that. That being said, it is best to tailgate <laughs> with an RV from Burdette Camping. Hey, you shot that sleeping boar in 2022? No, I think it was, I forget what it was. Two years ago, I think. Was it? It feels eight, like how, it was eight years ago. Just another kill for me. That's all it was. Just another kill. I, I can't remember. So, Stony Brook is warming up the other night. And it's pregame. They're just doing warm-ups. And one of their guys comes over to the broadcast table, and he says, you Tony? One of their assistants. I said, uh, yeah. He said, I'm so-and-so. Assistant coach, Stony Brook. I'm going, okay, this will be interesting. He says, I understand you do a great Don Cricky imitation. <laughs> <laughs> Is that real? <laughs> Straight up. And I said, now why would you say that? <laughs> he said, he said, I went to school at Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> you give him a Dean Stein cooler and tell I me said, you did. Well, let me ask, did you go to school with Dean Stein cooler? <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he goes, oh, that's awesome. That's spot on. So come to find out, good dude. Good dude. He's, Word uh, travels. He's friends with our buddy Mark Richmond. Uh, okay, yeah. So it's always like you just talk about small Notre Dame worlds. college head coach. Yes, yeah, so Mark's from Martinsburg, Notre Dame College head coach. They coached together okay. at Fordham with Neubauer. Oh, so Richmond okay. told him, hey, you got to Nebraska, you should hear these guys do Dean Steinkiller. <laughs> That's great. I thought you were going to say he asked you about boar hunting. Like, I, I did, too. I'm I in thought, West Virginia. I Any place I go boar hunting here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, texter, the Mothman, he's still out there, <laughs> signed by Dan in Morgantown. P.S. I sold my land in Wood County. Could you show that uh, picture of the Mothman? Land. See, that's he sold his land there. Right, there he is, Mothman. See that Mothman? And I'll punch him right in the face. Punch him right in the throat. <laughs> Texter, before the season started, I had asked over under seven and a half league wins. At the time, you said there were too many unknowns to answer. This team has been so much fun to watch. I want to restate my question. Heading into league play, over under nine league wins with one win in the NCAA tournament. As always, I love the show, Corey in Washington, D.C. Brad, he's got the right number there. Nine. I, as we sit today, I would take the over, but it's going to be tight, I think. I think it's going to be close. What if we put it at 10? Under? Uh, under. 
because again, you're, you're just playing history there. Like we said, the the jump from where you were last year to this year would be absolutely historic if you got in that range. Yeah. One win in nine the, and nine would be a great conference season. I'm just telling you, one win in the tournament, right? In the where Big would you Twelve go there? tournament? Yeah, that's what he's no, asking. Not the Big Twelve. NCAA. Yeah, yeah, one NCAA tournament. So NCAA tournament. now you're making an assumption that they're getting in. That's one. But if I go over seven and a half, that's probably true that they're in. Mm-hmm. What are you doing on nine over under? That's his no. That's his question. His question. He's, he's, over. Said he said he's, he's over on nine. No, oh, he's no. under on nine. No, I was under on ten. Were you on nine? That's his number. He oh, said yeah, seven, seven and, and a half. half I early. asked you early. Now he's he's adjusted. They do that. That's right. I mean, it's right on. I'd stay away. You'd run from it. <laughs> you don't have to bet everything. You look for a side bet. You don't have to bet everything. Stay away. <laughs> Too good of a number. No value. <laughs> you remember last episode when I told you we had those had those cats from Buchanan? They were at that NFL game, and they ran into Robert Jones, former Cowboys. Yeah. Show those pictures, uh, Taylor, of those guys. So there's his ring. Oh. That ring's so big, he doesn't even wear it on his ring finger. That's not his ring finger, is it? Like, how's his no. hand? No, that's not his ring finger. Look yeah, at that rock. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah. And there's the dudes. There's yeah. those dudes from Buchanan. And that's uh, because that was Zay Jones's Zay Jones's dad, dad and the mom. The mom's Zay Jones' mom's from West Virginia. Graduated from WVU. Oh, so sure. yo, shout out to you guys. Of course you did. Uh, you can see based on those trees back there, they were not. Uh, they were not anywhere cold. They were not anywhere cold there. Little palm trees going in the back. Uh, I want to shout out um, to Professor Colleen Moretz. And her students, Taylor, can you show those those pictures when we had those those folks in there? So this is the group of folks. So that's Emily and Jordan and Natasha, and those are WVU fashion design students, and they are the ones that are designing the apparel. That was our meeting that we had um, for the Hoppy Kerchevel event which is coming up january 6th they made a presentation as part of their class project independent study and they revealed logos and they revealed apparel items that are going to be designed and available in the swag bag <laughs> for the uh, folks that will be attending the event and then they just might go on public sale uh, as well after that i was asked about that so items will swag will go on sale mm -hmm. for sale efforting yeah show the picture i mean they were into it they made a full Full presentation to us. There's Emily and Jordan and Natasha. This Wait, is going to be like Nike, right? I mean, it's going to be well, a little like better, that. probably, probably than Nike. Yeah, probably huge. It's probably better than Nike. So Put thank you very much. Together, a brand guide for us too. What's that? A brand guide. How you, you can use logos, the logo colors, colors and, and things like that. It's oh, logo, yeah. What's the, uh, what, what's the, what do you call those numbers for colors? PMS. PMS. PMS, PMS. Yeah. What are the PMS numbers for the Mountaineers? Brad knows him. I think, blue, I think the blue is 285. Gold was 124, I think. <laughs> Got it. A C, it's a, a CMKY, too, right? That's what I use a lot of, CMK, CMKY. That's, a, that's in graphics, right? When I do the posing schools color, I always do the C. You know what I'm talking about? No, I never use this. So that was, it's one of them's magenta. But that's what I always do, CMKY. <laughs> I got this thing on my computer where I can set the color of the school so their their chart prints exactly oh, really? with the school color. Yeah. Can you adjust the kerning? Uh, I don't need to. It's done automatically. <clears throat> I just wanted to say kerning. <laughs> uh, texter, as I listened, I heard you guys mention the fudge again. I was left wondering, who's Mark? But then I realized I forgot to sign my text. I'm with spreads on the Mothman fear, Michael and Claude. So it was Michael who made the... Uh, who made the fudge? Yes. Was, yeah, because Carson, his daughter, dropped it off. With a K. Yeah. Very absolutely. good fudge. Superb. Did you ever get any of that fudge? No. Whew, that excellent. was good. Where were you? Where you? Oh, you were in Texas. Yeah, I was out. You were in Texas. I had a little of that fudge with some coffee. Did pretty you? Good. Right? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Very good. Drank a lot of coffee this weekend. My son was any big coffee guy, so he just pounds it. He does? Like throughout is he one the of those all-day guys? Yeah, he's, yeah, he, Did he like, switch to decaf at any point or straight high test no, was the like, whole time? It was like 4 o'clock yesterday. Yeah, make him a make meal, Matt. I'm going to make me a little coffee right now. Everything's chilled out. Yeah, I'm going to make Just a little coffee. coffee. And Andrew asked him. Andrew goes like, you drink that like all day? That doesn't yeah. bother you? No, it doesn't bother Does he go to sleep at night? Yeah, he sleeps. He's fine. He sleeps. He's all good. 
He's all good. Well, you guys wanted to be out of here because you guys got business. So tell us, tell, the, tell the listeners out there what you're doing now. I don't even know. What's our game this Quick happening? Lane Bowl. Excuse me? We're going to do the Quick Lane Bowl here in, a, in an hour. Quick Lane? Quick Lane out of Detroit. Oh, this out is Out of Detroit. Detroit, New Mexico State, and um, Bowling Green. Bowling Green, yeah. New Mexico State, Bowling Green. That's an interesting match because obviously those are two teams that don't normally see one another. It, both really good stories getting to this point. These are two of the worst teams in college football going back just a couple of seasons. So they've turned it around. Both are in the bowl. Mm-hmm. And you know what? 26th. Middle of the day, we got a bowl game. Let's got go. college football. Let's play. You watched every one. You so watched a, a little bit of at least every one so, so far. far. Christmas Eve. Did you watch the game Christmas Eve? Yeah. Middle. Middle. You watched middle? Yeah. Middle one. That. Did they average less than three yards a play and they middle, still won? Middle averaged two yards per play and won that game. Did you see? In Hawaii. Did you see yesterday they played basketball, the Diamond Classic, eight-team tournament in Hawaii? You see how Hawaii won? Yeah, last second shot. Heaved it. Dude, heaved it. Here's, I want to ask you this. So, Hawaii's down two, okay? Dude hits a buzzer-beating three, puts him up one. He's also fouled. He's also fouled. So, the bucket puts him up one. No time on the clock. I don't think they shot the free throw, Senator. Didn't need to? Well, the game's won, but for gambling purposes... Don't you put the oh. kid at the line? Now, I have no idea what the what the number was, but you to put the kid at the line, you shoot the foul shot. He's either going to win by one or two. Could affect over under. Could affect everything. Good, but I don't think they shot it. Might not have. Probably not thinking that way. But don't they have to do like in the NBA? He shoots that shot, right? Good question. That's a good question. I don't know the answer. To Check that. with your boy uh, uh, Dave Sharapova. Sharapan. Same thing. See, speaking of that, did you see the uh, West Virginia matchup yesterday? I thought it was pretty wild watching those NBA games. There's Javon Carter playing. Or Deuce played in the first game. Javon played in the second game. I mean, it's against Missoula against in Missoula. the second game. Yeah, but I, even things like um, first game. Here's Deuce Guard and James Harden. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm looking at that going like, that's pretty wild. That Bucks uh, Celtics game was a good basketball game. <laughs> there were some, I mean, that was playing. Those guys yeah. were trading punches at the end on shots. Tatum was really good. Yeah, how many? I just making. Tatum shots. was really good. You know, we were talking a little bit about this before we uh, we we started recording today. You know, every all these kids come in and they want to play in the NBA and or they want to play in the NFL, right? Oh. Okay. So here's the difference. If you're someone that bashes on the NBA. And you say they don't play defense and they don't do this. Uh, turn it off, right? Because this will make you go crazy. The skill level of pros is so crazy over the top that it's amazing. And you talk about making shots. <laughs> That's why they're there. They make shots. They just make shots and they guard and they defend. And it's just at a it's 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 so up here that you're not even realizing what you're watching. It's true. It's amazing skill level. And the same goes in football. You know, guys want to go in the I'm gonna go in the NFL. I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna play in the NFL. Think about this. Guess what the receivers do in the NFL? Mm. They catch the ball. They catch the ball in crazy, off balance, getting getting hell like twisted around and then they catch the ball and then get their feet down and then so guys that want to go play i'm going to go play in the nfl if you can't catch the ball in college you won't play in the nfl if you drop the ball in college you got no chance none it's just amazing when you watch that level of play it's simply amazing. Yeah, it is. The the basketball part, I watched a lot of it. I mean, you know, I do watch NBA throughout the year, but watched a ton of it yesterday. It, it's incredible. How about the Joker last night? 41, 15, and 15. 41, 15, and 15. 80, he's got over 80 triple doubles in his career. 80. And he's a center. <laughs> Loser. Well, I mean, in, in, the, in, in the football world, you know, you're watching the game, and it's two, like, okay teams. And then the guy... the there's a, there's a pass play, and the, the quarterback throws the ball at the only place he can throw the ball to the receiver who catches it, and Brad gets his feet down and makes a possible catch with a, def with a professional defender all over him. It's why, guys, we've, we've done this, especially on the football side. There has been some elite, can't be better in college than what they've been players here at West Virginia that don't make it in the can't, league. That, make it. that tells you what that level, mm -hmm. what it requires. 
And basketball is the same way. There was that giant drought where West Virginia went decades without a guy in the NBA. Yeah. That shows you the level that it needs to be. So why is David Sills in the NFL? What did he do when he was here? Caught the ball. Caught the ball. <laughs> right? He caught the ball. You didn't say, like, hey, David, Sills drops the, David Sills drops passes. He didn't drop passes. That's why it took him a hard road to get there, but he's in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Right? Amazing. It's amazing. It was amazing. Fun to watch. Geno St Smith still playing in the NFL. Still playing. Yeah, still playing in the NFL. It's the Pro Bowl. What did Geno Smith do when he was here? All he did was throw touchdown passes. Made plays. Like seven or eight in a game. Yeah, I just going to throw a touchdown pass. That's why he's in the NFL. Anyway. Javon's game's gotten a lot better, too. Oh. And dude. I mean, Javon was great in college, as we know. He's gotten he's gotten really good. No question. He just, I mean, he looks like... You're not saying, oh, there's a West Virginia guy on the court. You're saying there's a guy that both <laughs> belongs there the doing court. what he's supposed belongs to do, court, right? Yeah. Both he and Deuce. Both yeah. he and Deuce. They, they totally fit in the league. Yeah. Three guys before the game brought to us by Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at BurdettCamping.com. If you or someone you know is thinking about an RV, go to the place that offers you a warranty that lasts forever, which is a long time. By Comax Business Systems, your full-service Konica Minolta dealer. Visit Comax Business Systems at ComaxWV.com. So, got that new printer from Comax? You did? Brad and I have shared the same problem, that we couldn't get anything to print for, like, years in our house. Like, we had all... I mean, we tried to jury-rig everything. You know, this same morning, I, like, on my phone, just went, I'm just going to print this. So it was easy. Boom, next thing, easy I, hear that, next thing I hear is that printer. <laughs> nice. Putting it out, I'm going, like, that's pretty solid. Comax Business Systems, they do a lot more. Managed IT, managed voice, managed phone. They can do it all for you. Let them come in, give a complete inventory of your businesses and what your needs are, and they will take care of you at ComaxWV.com. Full service. Konica Minolta dealer. And by GoMart. If you are not a GoMart Rewards member yet, you need to be. Sign up today. Go to the website, GoMart.com. Rewards and a whole lot more. Who knows? Might save your vacation, save your gas. So that'll do it for us. Our producer, Taylor Kennedy, the Dean, Hoppy Kerchival, and Baby Hugs, Senator <laughs> Brad Howe. Back again next week on Three Guys Before the Game. Over and out. See ya. <laughs>